I'm here from Crackhead today. <laughs> um, so at Real Talk, it's a whole lot easier for me to talk to Joe Birch walking up and down the street than it is a, a room full of cops. Y'all have arrested me a lot. Uh, DTF is good at what they do. I know this for a fact because they picked me up in 2014 and 2015. Uh, we got OCU in here. Nope. Y'all got us a few times too. Um, but I think that video does a great job of talking about our why, right? I think everybody in this room understands that addiction, narcotics trafficking, and human trafficking for that matter, the problems we're never going to prosecute our way out of. Um, we, we understand that. Now, I'm certainly not here advocating for decriminalization or anything like that because it was getting tired of going to jail that actually helped me hit rock bottom. Um, I, what that video does not do a great job of is showing you the, the end result of what we're actually trying to do. Um, so I want to introduce Robert Coleman, who is better in person than he is on camera. That's why he was not in the Joe Birch video. He's the, he's the uh, other third of this mission. We could not have done any of it without him. Uh, he is not an addict or an alcoholic. Uh, he's just a damn good human being, and I want him to introduce Garland. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, first, I want to ask y'all to give a round of applause for Ben, who just did it for five years. do is to introduce to you guys someone who's been a we'll call a very active participant in the judicial system for most of his life, right? Um, probation in four states? Currently. Four current states. Yeah, four states currently. Uh, three of which you're banned from. <laughs> He's awesome. So we took somebody like that who is by all accounts, someone who should be careered out, right? That's someone who should just go to jail, and that's where we'll keep that person. But he did something different. He chose to be different and better. He chose sobriety. And how many months now? Eleven. Eleven yeah. months sober. And now? Forty. Forty. Forty as he's ever been sober in his entire life. Yeah. So... He's a great example of what you can do when you start looking at addiction as, a, as a, a problem. Like there's a lot of different causes involved, right? There's uh, you know low socioeconomic status, there's low access to healthcare, high unemployment rates. Like there's a lot of causes involved, but in our experience, there's one cure and that cure is purpose. And that's what we exist to provide. We wanna get out there and show people that there is a different way you can be and you know, like they say, you can attract more bees with honey than vinegar. And showing people that they're valued, that they have potential, that they could choose their own destiny instead of letting circumstance dictate what they do, that's a really empowering thing. And Garland's a great example of what that looks like. So Garland, why don't you tell them a little bit about how that decision happened for you. Hello, everybody. Um, so, I started young, man. I come from a household with a, you know, addicts for parents, uh, abusive alcoholic father, and I uh, was surrounded by nothing but drugs and crime my whole life. I knew that was where I was going to end up because that was all I was. It was around. It was just what people did, right? So, um, I've been a IV drug user since I was 12 years old, up until 11 months ago. I've been. In, I went to prison when I was 18 out of Shelby County for seven years, uh, and there I learned just how to be a different, a more involved criminal, I guess. It didn't really rehabilitate me any. Um, after that, I just run in, just run in after run in with the law enforcement. Um, I've, been to the, I've been incarcerated a lot. I've been to jail a lot. Um, basically, rock bottom for me was just getting sick of that, kind of like Ben said, you just get sick for no other reason, like just to not go to jail. Really, that's kind of what's, what's bonded. But after that, I started being surrounded by like-minded individuals and like understanding that there was like a purpose because I never had a skill set. I've never had a real job. I've never had it, never had, thought I would. I never thought I had a chance. And um, since getting sober and getting surrounded by people in, and, and I luckily got involved in, and met the We Fight Monsters organization and started seeing what they were doing around the city. So instead of just being, I always thought sobriety to me or a different kind of life would be 
boring or it would just be exhausting, like be uh, doing nothing that I didn't, that I, nothing that I wanted to do, right? And um, <clears throat> after my mind started to clear up and I got around the right people, man, I started realizing that there was other things that I could be doing with my life and not, instead of just terrorizing the streets and instead of, you know, staying away from my family and never, I always felt like I had a purpose, I had some kind of purpose, I just never knew what it was and I never had any drive. But once I learned a new way of life and I learned how to, I learned where to direct my energy. Like uh, the energy that I always use towards finding drugs and, and st trying to stay out of jail, man, I realized if I just put like a fraction of that towards doing the right thing and trying to progress in some kind of way, trying to help the next person, to help the next suffering addict or alcoholic. Um, now I have purpose, right? So I have a purpose that that's outside of myself, which is something I never had before. Um, that's one of the things that keeps me going every day, man. It's, it's really the people that, are, that, that I'm surrounded with I see them doing it, and I know it's not always easy, but once you get some momentum, man, it gets really easy, and it gets like, you know, we work. I work at a warehouse called Gangland Express. It's part of We Fight Monsters, and um, that's, you know, Robert here taught us, he taught me a, a skill, man. He gave me a, he's teaching me something that I can, that now I'm teaching other people. Um, and it keeps us out of the streets, man. It keeps us, you know, like I said, I never thought I had a chance. Most of us that are at the shop never thought we would have a chance. Um, but somebody give us, somebody seen something in us, man. And um, that's the only reason I'm standing here now. But without that, you know, I'd just be, you know, I kind of figured I would always die in prison. And, and that's just kind of the way that it was, you know, or overdose uh, the one, the final time, you know, and but now with purpose, man, it's like, it's a beautiful thing to watch people grow, to watch people, to watch women that have lost their kids, get their kids back, to get their family back, like for people to get back on good terms with their family, people to, um, you know, just start to rebuild their lives, start to, start to, you know, be productive members of society. And then they're teaching this to other people. It doesn't just stop with me. Like there's people that I come in contact with. Now I'm the voice of reason, which is the strange thing, right? I know it doesn't <laughs> seem like that should be the case, but now oddly enough, I can be the voice of reason. And you know, who better to help some of the people that are still in the trenches than somebody that's lived in the trenches and mm -hmm. been there most of their life, you know? So not only does it, you know, and then you get to the people that you help and the people that you reach out to, man, you get to watch them grow, right? You get to watch these things happen to them, watch them, the, the things in their life start to fall into place. And whoever would have known, but all it really took was to get sober, man, and to leave drugs alone, you know? I, I battled with schizophrenia for decades, and I just thought that I was born that way until I stopped using drugs, and then I started realizing that maybe... <laughs> Crazy how that works. Yeah, maybe it was just a crack in the hair. I mean, you know... Anyways, um, it's a great thing, man, to be with these people and grow with these people. And the mission, man, the mission to get, uh, you know, instead of locking people up, man, forever, because that could have happened to me easily, right? I could have been careered out easily. But they gave me a chance. And like, like I said, what spawned it was just not wanting to go to jail, right? I just didn't want to wake up in jail anymore, man, until I realized that, you know, there was just a whole lot more to it, man. Now I can direct my energy towards something positive, man, and towards helping the rebuild the community that I destroyed for so long. Mm -hmm. so just a little bit of contact, or, or to kind of close that out, Garland, there's, uh, you know, we, like I said in the video, we do a lot of social media and grassroots fundraising through our, our social media platforms. So, Whatever Ben and I don't cover personally, we use those sorts of donations. So we're always taking photos of the work that we're doing. And there was one photo that was of Garland. And I remember when I got the screenshot in our group chat of your daughter commenting, that's my daddy. Yep. Right? Would yep. you trade getting high for that feeling you get when you when you read that? No, never. No. That's an easy no, right? Yeah, easy no. 
And everybody that gets faced with that same question has the same answer, yeah. but we have to be able to put them in a place where they can answer it. And that's what we're trying to do. Yep, thank you. I think that's a, a perfect place to end. Uh, the partnership with DTF is gonna be huge in a lot of reasons, or a lot of ways. We almost lost Garland, what, four months ago? Uh, passed bad decision, came back to bite him in the ass, he got picked up on an out-of-state warrant. Most guys, myself included, if that happened, they would immediately go off the rails, relapse. For whatever reason, Garland decided he, he liked the life he had today and decided to trust the process. And that's how he ended up on paper in a fourth state. <laughs> because we were able to get letters from uh, Judge Wilson, I forget who else, a whole bunch of people highlighting the work that he's done with our, our you know, child trafficking survivors in the warehouse. And so law enforcement all around the country, it's not just here in Shelby County, is actually looking at things like this and realizing, you know, if we meet people where they're at and try to rebuild the individual rather than just locking up addicts. And for context, this is a violent criminal, right? He's, I would say he's been fully rehabilitated, but how many of your charges are not about? Zero, right? Yeah. So there's hope out there for all of them. The partnership with DTF is gonna allow us to prevent situations like that. Hopefully, uh, it already has in a couple of instances where past bad decisions came back to bite somebody after they get sober. We were able to work out deals where they were able to just, you know, make restitution and go on about their merry way doing the work that they're doing. Uh, we appreciate all of y'all very, very much. Johnny, you're a rock star. Thank you.